There was no place for luxury in the life of the Mahatma and his taste in food was as simple as his clothing. That may seem a little dull for our pampered palates, but executive chef Vani Padiachi found inspiration in the earthy goodness of his favorite ingredients. She's put together a special menu based on Gandhiji's food philosophy. Bonnie is based in Franschhoek and in addition to its founders, this picturesque Western Cape town has treasured the memory of the Mahatma and Madiba. It's also dotted with gardens, enabling our guest chef to select her ingredients. So I've just come back from the garden picking up my secret ingredient, but that's only for our next dish. So the first dish I'm going to be cooking for the Gandhi-inspired menu is bangan butter. I would need an aubergine. Gently rub this with some olive oil, skewer them and cook them in the tandoor oven or over a gas flame. I have pre-done some roasted aubergines. So I'm going to start off by chopping the aubergines, just a few rough chops, just to break it down in a heated saucepan, some oil, some onions. Going to saute them off just a little bit. I'm going to add some julienne ginger, some chilies, also just a few. And to that, I'm going to add a half a teaspoon of Kashmiri spice, half a teaspoon of ground coriander, Give that a good swirl around, just to cook the spices. And to that, I'm going to be adding the tomato puree. So you're gonna cook the tomatoes out and the chopped aubergines. I'm going to season with a little bit of salt and we'll cook that for a minute, just so all the flavors pull through. And then I'm going to add some fresh tomato concasse some fresh coriander to finish up our dish. You don't want to chop it too fine because we want to add all that beautiful coriander flavor to our bangan butter. And there we have it. So I'm going to serve this in a tiny bowl. Get a good dollop of your bangan butter into your bowl. And to finish off, I'm going to pick some fresh coriander, a good sprig of it, and there we go. My next dish. This is where my secret ingredient comes to play. My signature marigold salad. So the first ingredient we need is a cucumber, diced red onion, sliced spring onions. I like the flavour it adds to it, so it doesn't have that oniony taste, but a nice subtle flavour. Cherry tomatoes, I like the cherry tomatoes to be peeled, it aids digestion and also it looks pretty, it's very chefy. Some baby rainbow carrots, radish. It just gives that beautiful freshness as well. So I'm going to do a few slices of that. Mmm, yum. Fresh julienne ginger. And it's about a half of a lemon juice. Some chaat masala, just beautiful flavour. Good glug of olive oil. And now the secret ingredient, marigolds. Oh, look at that, that's beautiful. And don't forget, a little pinch of salt for seasoning. And that's our marigold salad. To complement the marigold salad, I'm going to be making a paneer korma. Now this dish is made in two parts. The first part is the korma sauce. The ingredients you'll be needing for doing this is onions, chilies, cashew nuts, plain yogurt, ground cardamom, butter, ghee, ginger and garlic puree. Place them into a pot, top it up with water, bring it to a boil for about 45 minutes. I have made a batch earlier, so this is our finished product. To make our paneer korma, I start off with some ghee. We're gonna let that ghee melt a little bit. And to that, I'm gonna add some cumin seeds. So as that starts to fry, it releases all that beautiful flavor. I'm gonna add the bay leaf and let that cook gently. And to that, I'm going to add the korma paste. And we want to cook this at a slow temperature. You don't want to cook it too fast because it's going to catch at the bottom because of the cashew nuts and the yogurt that we've used to make the base of this ingredient. Lastly, our paneer. 
And once this comes to a gentle boil, you can see it bubbling away, then you know your dish is finished. I'm gonna add a little bit of salt. Your dish is gently bubbling away. So now we know it's ready. So switch off and to plate. Get some paneer in and the good dollop of the sauce in. That's our paneer korma done. So now let's move on to something much more substantial, aloo palak. The first ingredient going in is ghee. So I'm going to melt the ghee just gently, adding my cumin seeds. I'm gonna add in a dried chilies because I like to bring in the heat of my dish early. Some fresh ginger for the Ayurvedic properties. Chopped garlic, get that nicely sauteed off. Chopped masala. Chopped masala brings that good body to this dish. Saute. Green chili, just a few slices. And then the spinach puree. Let that cook a bit to reduce down or else it becomes too mushy, so you want that to reduce nicely. The next ingredient is our blanche sauteed aloo. Now, aloo is potatoes in Hindi. And saute off just a few seconds. Fresh tomato concasse. Now this brings out this beautiful chunkiness into your dish. I'm gonna turn that off because my dish is almost ready. The last ingredient for that beautiful, full-bodied freshness to the dish is fresh lemons. So I'm going to slice that, squeeze, and just a drop or two into your pan. Give that a good stir. So you got all that lasting freshness of that lemon juice. All I need to do is plate up this dish. Oh, it smells so good. Alu palak done. No tali's completed without jiro mata palau and chapati. I have these ready, so I'm going to plate up and then let's eat. Vegetable raita is a mixture of hung yogurt with tomatoes, cucumber, fresh coriander and mint. The tali or plata is a popular way of presenting a meal in all styles of Eastern cuisine and the vegetarian goodness would surely have pleased the Mahatma.